should be up, so I've got to flip my phone camera. Hello. There's my Facebook Live audience. God bless you. Waiting for my camera to flip so the Periscope folks can see me. Right in air sharing the Twitter. Right, I'm going to have to put it on there manually. Okay. Wish I knew how to fix that error in Periscope. But anyway, so, uh, no, that's me on Facebook. But, uh, <clears throat> so hopefully my parents will be coming on in a minute. Hello to my Facebook Live audience. God bless you. Prophet David Taylor here. And um, glad to be back with you. There we go. Hello, there's my Periscope audience. God bless you. Glad to be back with you in uh, January, uh, first Sunday of the new year, first Sunday of 2019. Glad to be back and uh, here to uh, deliver prophetic word at the beginning of the year. So let's start with a quick word of prayer, then we're going to jump right in, because as always, I have a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it in. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us, oh God, to see the beginning of a new year. That is all because of your grace and mercy. There are so many people, oh God, that didn't make it. So according to your mercy and your purposes, you saw fit to extend our lives, and we don't take anything for granted. But we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for this day. So please be in the midst of this broadcast and breathe through me, O oh God, and let uh, be released what you want to be released so that you might be glorified, so the saints might be edified, and so the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. So now I trust that you went and checked out the two prophetic located words I told you about. There's a prophetic located word on my YouTube channel for the end of 2018. That's about getting your grades from Jesus. You do not come to the end of a year and not ask the Lord, how did I do? But you need to ask the Lord at the end of every year, how did you do? Okay, did you spend your time doing what the Lord wanted you to do? Uh, did you accomplish what God said uh, before you to accomplish? So get your grades from Jesus. That's a prophetic located word for 2018 on my YouTube channel. And then there's a prophetic located word for 2019. You want to start your year off in sync with the Lord. Remember that the Lord has already lived 2019. The Lord has already lived this year. It's already done for him. He knows everything that's going to happen this year. He's already lived it. So why wouldn't you want to receive the commandments from the head of the church to let you know how to position yourself at the beginning of the year. Why wouldn't you want, want to be in sync with our Lord and Savior who already knows everything that 2019 holds? I mean stock market. I mean relationships. I mean health. I mean school. I mean political scenarios. I mean entertainment. I mean sports. I mean any part of your life. The Lord has already lived through this entire year and he already knows what's going to happen. So why wouldn't you ask him for his commandments? Why wouldn't you ask Jesus? What do you want me to do? Where am I supposed to be for this year? Okay, so I trust you already checked out those two prophetic located words on my YouTube channel. Those links are available on my Facebook page. Okay, so we're going to jump in for today. <clears throat> As always, I have a lot of information to give you. So you're going to have to watch this video more than once because I'm going to throw a lot at you. All right, <clears throat> we're going to start off from the top. What is my tagline? My tagline is... God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. One more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? All right, so welcome to all my audience, my Facebook audience, my Periscope audience, and those of you that are watching me on YouTube. God bless you. Thank you for checking me out live, those of you that are watching live, and thank you for watching the replay. Now, please uh, like and share. My goal is to get this prophetic word to millions of people. Whenever God releases a prophetic word, it's designed to change nations. This morning our pastor talked about releasing uh, words and how we were going to be praying over the state of Illinois and God was going to have us affect the region. See, whenever God releases a prophetic word, it's designed to change a nation. Whenever the Lord wanted to give Israel direction, he released a prophetic word to shape a nation. Okay, So I want you to please like and share this video. Uh, because we want to get this word out to as many people as possible, okay? Uh, if you want to support my ministry, if you want to sow into it, 
because uh, remember, Matthew 10, 41 says that whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. So at the very least, God will give you greater uh, vision when you sow into a prophet's ministry, okay? Because you always reap what you sow. So if you want to sow into my ministry, uh, paypal.me link is on my Facebook Live, my Periscope profile, and my Twitter feed. Also, Amazon Smile, you can donate to my not-for-profit uh, corporation, uh, and your donations are tax deductible to 501c3. So there's links on all my profiles. I'm also going to get some new apps this year because a couple of people told me they wanted to uh, donate through apps. So when I get those apps updated, I will let you know. How do you find me? I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. That's me, Prophet David Taylor. So if you want to find me anywhere, online or on social media, just look up hashtag PDT. And you'll find all my channels, all my content. I'm live on Facebook and Periscope right now, Sundays, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, where I give a live prophetic word and prophetic teaching. Then you, wa you can watch the replay, Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. I'm live on second Thursdays at 7 p.m. with a series I call No More Genies, where we get rid of genie concept. That's the second Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock p.m. on all the same channels. That's coming up this Thursday. So I'm going to tell you at the end of the broadcast what my topic is going to be this week. This Thursday is my live No More Genies broadcast, all right? Okay, so let's jump right in. <clears throat> the prophetic word for today is wait. W-A-I-T, not W-E-I-G-H-T, not however you are, but W-A-I-T, wait. Prophetic word for today is wait. So what does that mean? What's that talking about? Let's look at our scriptures. We're going to start with a very familiar one, Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah is a major prophet in the Old Testament. Now, when you hear me use the word, uh, the phrase major prophet, it does not mean that his prophecy or his book is more important than the minor prophets. It just means that it's bigger. Isaiah, Jeremiah, they had a lot to say their books are bigger. But Habakkuk, uh, Nahum, Obadiah, Micah, they had smaller books. So we call them minor prophets just because their books are smaller, not because their messages were less important. Okay? So Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, reading out of the Berean Study Bible, says this, But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Now we're also going to look at a companion scripture. We're going to look at Psalm 130, verse 5. Psalm is just about in the middle of the Bible. It's probably the second biggest book. I think Jeremiah is the biggest book in the Bible. Psalms is the second biggest book in the Bible. And it's mostly music. It's got 150 chapters. So we're going to look at Psalms, uh, chapter 130, verse 5. And it says, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word, I put my hope. Okay, now why is that significant? <clears throat> the Hebrew word there for wait is the same in both of those verses. And that word is, hold up, I'm pulling up my Strong's. It's Strong's concordance number 6960. Okay, in case you want to look it up. Because I, you know, I always tell you to read the Bible for yourself. Study the Bible for yourself. So, of course, the word is pulling up slowly. There it is. It is Kavach. Kavach. Okay, that's uh, 6960, Kavach. That means to wait for... Uh, it also means to lie and wait for. It means uh, to be collected. Uh, it's from a derivative word. Gather together, look patiently, tarry, wait for, on, upon. Okay? That's the same word in both verses, kavach. Okay? So let's read it again with that in mind. Isaiah 40, uh, 40, 31. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Psalm 135, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word I put my hope. Why is that important to us? Because <clears throat> if you are entering into your promised land, if this is your year, you've been obedient to the Lord in the past, and now God is moving you forward into your promised land, the way you engage in promised land living is you must get your instructions from the Lord every day. Okay, so we started off the year with a prophetic locator word. God can tell you what to do every month, every quarter, 
every week, but also the Lord can let you know what to do every day. So to wait in this context, now there's been a lot of old school teaching. I heard it a lot when I was a little boy. That to wait on God means God tells you something in 2015 and you wait until 2020 for it to come to pass. That's not really what that means. These particular verses, when people say wait on the Lord, it's not, it, it doesn't mean what they've conveyed in, in that ideology. That's not what it means. What it means is that I sit still at the beginning of my day and I spend time with God and I gather together all my problems, all my thoughts, every strand of my life, lift it up to the Lord, and then I wait for instruction. I wait for God to tell me what to do. That's what it means. You see what I mean? That's why you have to have relationship with God, and you cannot just have religion. If you have religion, you're going to do the same things every year. Pastor, we're just talking about that this morning. You're going to put, you're going to come to church three times a year. You're going to put $5 in the offering plate. You're going to sing the same songs. With church starts going along, you're going to look at your watch talking about time to get out of here because the game coming on, and nothing in your life will ever change. People that do that just have religion. And I have discovered and accepted that for some people, that's all they want. At some point in your Christian life, you're going to have to understand, some people do not want a relationship with They just want to accept him as Savior. They don't want to accept him as Lord. They don't want to do what the Lord says do. They want to be born again so they can miss hell and be a part of God's kingdom, but then they just want to live their lives as they see fit. That's not promised land living. That's not the highest way to live. That is not what God calls us to as Christians. He does not call us to get saved and then keep doing what we want. You can't just accept Jesus as Savior. You hear me say it all the time. You have to accept him as Lord. But to get into the promised land, to get into the promises of God, to get into living your dream, to get into living the life that God wants you to have and becoming the best version of yourself, all that requires that you HBO, you hear, believe, and obey. So the Bible is teaching us here. I know, I know some of this you never heard this before in your life. The Bible is teaching us here. Let's look at Isaiah again. But those who wait, those who gather themselves together, those that lie and wait for, those that tarry, wait for or upon the Lord, will renew their strength. What does that mean practically? It means that when you spend time with Jesus, he breathes new life into your spirit. It just happened to me this morning. This morning when I was standing up there in worship, I just felt the Lord breathe some new life in my spirit. I just felt renewed. So when I go and spend time with God in worship, he breathes on me and puts more life inside of me. That's a literal truth. If you've ever been dragging and you're ever tired and you find yourself just out of energy and you don't know why, sometimes it's because you haven't spent enough time with the Lord. Sometimes you need to turn off the phone, <laughs> turn off the TV, turn off your tablet, turn off your iPad, okay? Block the world out, <clears throat> go before the Lord and just spend time with Him, okay? Spend some time meditating on the Word and then spend some time uh, in prayer and praise. Spend some time praising God and thanking God for who he is and what he's done. Spend some time in supplication, asking God, opening up your heart, telling God what's on your heart. And then you have to sit still and let the Lord talk back to you. That's the part that a lot of people are missing. Do you know that if there's going to be an accident on the way you go to work, the Holy Ghost will tell you that morning, don't take that way to work. Go another way. Did you know that? He really will. Did you know that if you're having health problems, that the Holy Ghost can put his finger on the things in your diet <clears throat> or maybe your exercise or the fact that you're not exercising or whatever? The Lord can reveal to you the changes you need to make. Did you know that? Did you know that God can tell you when to give offerings and when to save your money and when and where to invest your money and like hold your money now and God can tell you if you're planning on starting a business, what month to start the business in. Like you might be planning on starting like in like this month in January. The Lord may say, no, wait till March. So spend two more months planning and getting yourself together and then release in March. That kind of stuff. You see what I mean? That's the kind of stuff you got to sit before God every day and spend time with him. You can't be in a hurry. You can't rush into the presence of God 
with your hand out. That's genie concept. That's like if your kids come in the house and don't speak to you and don't ask you how you're doing and just say, give me the car keys. How long are you going to stand for that? Do you want anybody to come in your house and just say, give me? Don't you want to come in? As, don't you want them to come in and greet you? Hey, how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on in your life? Like that. God is a person. That's why you hear me say it all the time. God is a person, not a set of rules. And if you want to have victorious daily living, the only way you can have victorious daily living is if you sit down and spend some time with the Lord, you spend some time in the scripture, you praise him and you thank him, but then you have to let him talk back to you. Now, a lot of people will then say, how do I know the voice of the Lord? The answer to that question is, first you have to start with a strong foundation of scripture. You have to know what the word says, because the Lord is not going to contradict his word. Because I can't tell you the number of people I have heard just in the last year said that they have something that we call extra biblical revelation. And what that means is that it's against the Bible, but Jesus told me it was okay. <laughs> it ain't nowhere in the Bible. It's against what the Bible teaches, but the Lord appeared to me and told me that it was okay. That's called extra biblical revelation. That means you think you had a vision and Jesus told you that it was okay to do something that the scripture says is not okay to do. That's not the Lord. That's the devil. Remember that the devil is a fallen angel. Remember that the devil knew God before you did. Remember that the devil has known God longer than we do. So the Bible talks about how Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. foundation of scripture. I'm sorry, Facebook. I know that my, my, my feed just stuttered. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what's going on every time because I must be revealing some stuff about the devil, devil don't like because it seems like there's always something going on with my internet connection. But anyway, sorry about that, Facebook audience, because I know my, my feed just stuttered. So uh, I'll say that again. Whenever you get extra biblical revelation, whenever, whenever you get some kind of vision, <laughs> And you think that that vision is telling you something that goes against the Bible. That is not the Lord. Because the Lord will always speak in line with his word. That's why you've got to know the word. Can I prove that by scripture? Yes, I can. In Matthew chapter 4. Last year, I can't tell you how many people I've seen in the last year that have been led astray because they got extra biblical revelation and they thought that the Lord showed up to tell them something that's against the Bible. So you will know the voice of the Lord as you begin to study the scripture, study the written word of God, the logos. And as you begin to study the scripture, that's how you begin to know how God thinks. That's how you begin to tune your mind and your spirit to the voice of God. And then what will happen over time is you get used to knowing when the Lord is speaking to you. And God doesn't speak to everybody the same way. Okay? Some people get dreams. Some people get visions. Some people hear the voice of the Lord. Some people have uh, something put in their heart that you just can't shake. Sometimes you feel something in your spirit and you just can't get rid of it. Sometimes you're riding along and a song comes to you or you see an advertisement on the bus or whatever. You know, I'm not going to limit the Lord, but I'm saying for sure God doesn't deal with everybody the same way. Okay, so the way you tune your mind and your spirit to know when God is talking is you have to have a strong foundation in the Bible, in the written word of God. Okay, and that's how you begin to prepare yourself to hear from the Lord. And if anything comes to you, me or any other prophet, 
anything comes to you that says it's prophetic, I told you how to test the prophetic, okay, because that's in the scripture. You have to test and see, does it come to pass? If it comes to pass, it's from the Lord. And that's another way you can test to see if you're being led by the Lord. Because anything that God is telling you is going to happen, is going to happen. Okay? But you have to train yourself by spending time with him. Just like you got to know, think about your best friend, okay? You're probably closer today to your best friend than you've ever been before. Why is that? Because you spend time with them. Because you know them. Because you got to know them. Because you've been through things together. That's the same way you get to know the Lord. Because you spend time with him. Because you talk to him. Because you've been through some things together. Because you know how he thinks. Because you spend time in his word. Okay? That's critical. That was the key to the success of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was a man. Jesus would get up very early in the morning and go get somewhere by himself, by himself and spend time with God the Father and get instruction for the day. So the Lord would know, I'm going to this town today. I'm going to this town today. I'm going to meet this person. When I go here, do this. That's how Jesus lived his life. That's why he was successful. Because he got his instructions every morning from God. And so if you're going to... So that <clears throat> whatever it is that the Lord is trying to tell you, I'm sorry, Facebook, it looks like I keep losing my connection. I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, so I'm sorry if the video is stuttering. Um, but <clears throat> you have to ask the Lord every day to give you instructions for that day. And that's how you know what to do. That's how you know what you need to accomplish for the day, for the week, for the month, for the quarter, for the season, and for the year. That's promised land living. So the Bible says that you have to tarry before God. You have to sit down. You have to gather all your thoughts together and spend some time with him. Then God breathes new life into you. He gives you strength. That's why so many Christians end up being depleted and don't know what to do. It's because they haven't spent enough time with the Lord. God has to breathe life back into your spirit. Then it says you mount up with wings like eagles. That's when you learn how to fly and you run and not grow weary and you walk and not faint. In other words, you get enough strength to finish, finish your course. So the Bible is teaching us that the only way we can get strength, is, <clears throat> excuse me, the only way we can get strength as Christians to finish the work that God has given us is to spend time with him, is to wait before him, is to get our instruction from him and let him breathe new life into us. Now let's look at Psalm 130. It says, I wait for the Lord, my soul does wait, and in his word I put my hope. What is your soul? Now, you are a three-part being. You are spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You're all integrated, but those are different things. What is your spirit? Your spirit is a breath of life inside of you. That. When you breathe like that, that breath you have, that's your spirit. Your spirit is also a vessel and a container. Okay? For a whole bunch of things. For love, for hope, for imaginations, for the Holy Ghost. That's the breath of life inside of you. That is your spirit. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So your personality, your memories, your ability to make choices, your higher cognitive functions, all your, all your emotions, that's your soul. Okay? Then obviously your body is your body because your spirit and your soul live together in your clay body. So the Bible says, I wait for the Lord, my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions and in his word, I put my hope. What does that mean? That means that I have to learn how to let go of being my own boss, my own thoughts, my own agenda, my own way of doing things, and learn how to put my hope in his word. Because I know that whatever Jesus tells me to do will work. See what I mean? Again, I wait for the Lord. My soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions, they wait and in his word, I put my hope. So in other words, if I want something to come to pass or I want something to happen or I'm believing for something, I know that if I have the word of God on it, I know that the word of God will work. So I have to retrain my mind, my will, and my emotions to do what the word says do. Now, do you see how all these scriptures, there's a wonderful unity, there's a wonderful clarity of thought in all these scriptures, how the Lord keeps telling us the same thing in different ways. That we have to retrain how we think, how we feel, and how we choose to line up according to his word. 
Because when you put your hope in the word of God, that's a guarantee that what you're hoping for is going to come to pass. If it's in the word, okay, and you put your thoughts, your feelings, and your choices according to the word of God, it's going to come to pass. If somebody gives you a prophetic word from the Lord, and that's a proven prophet, someone who you know is accurate, and the words come to pass, then you can write it down. It's going to come to pass. You see what I mean? But you have to tarry before God. You have to spend time with him and learn how to hear his voice. Start with the written word of God. And then as God begins to speak with you, however it is he deals with you, you will know that's him. The reason that's so important is because the devil's not going to stop talking to you. The devil talks to you too. And so does your own flesh. And you have to sort through all that. You have to sort through all of that. You have to sort through all of that and learn how to hear the voice of God above whatever other kind of noise is in your life. If your heart is afraid, if your mind is afraid, if some demon of fear or anger or whatever the devil is trying to tempt you with or somebody in your life, there's all kind of voices coming at you all the time. You have to learn how to block those out and listen and do what the Lord is saying to do. That's the only way to get to victory. That's why it's so important to get up in the morning before you start your day, spend time with Jesus so you get used to how he thinks and how he deals with you so you can get your instructions for the day from the Lord. Then you'll have victory in that day. I've come to the end of my day sometimes and I've been dog tired, but I look back at what I got accomplished because I talked to the Lord about it in the morning in my uh, private quiet time with him. I lifted up my entire day. And ask him to guide me, tell me what to do, what not to do, what to leave alone, what to back burner. And I've come to the end of some days and I've just been exhausted. But when I look back what I got accomplished, I was very happy. I was happy with what God done for the day because I'd already been before the Lord with it. Uh, in my profession, there have been times when the Lord has told me to release certain books. Like you've heard me tell before that at one point in time I wanted to release a certain book. And the Lord said, don't release that book, release this one. And I can't imagine what the last couple of years of my life would have been like if I had released certain books out of order, if I had done what I thought, instead of checking with the Lord and getting instruction. Because my Uh, sorry, I think Facebook started again. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on with it. But it's important that you spend time with the Lord. It's important that you spend time listening to Jesus. It's important that you spend time hearing what the Lord has to say so that you'll know what to do for the day, the week, the month, the quarter, the semester, the year, the season. That's how you move into victorious living as a Christian. And you begin to retrain your mind, your emotions, and your will to start banking on the word of God and stop banking on anything else. Stop any, whatever, whatever else you were dependent on to guide your life, you learn how to let that go and start putting your hope in his word. Because if you put your hope in the word of God, guaranteed it will come to pass. If you do what the Lord says do, guaranteed it will come to pass. All right? All right, so I'm going to have to check these connections. I do not know why it keeps dropping. I'm not doing anything different than what I normally do. So maybe that's just the enemy attacking. I don't know why my Facebook video keeps stuttering, but I'm very sorry about that. Okay, now if we have any prayer requests, please put them on the screen. If you got anything you want me to pray for, please put uh, that up there now. <clears throat> When you see me, see me close my eyes and pray like that, I'm asking the Holy Ghost for physical healing. What do people physically need healing? And the Spirit of God just told me some people need healing on their teeth. Okay? So for those of you that are struggling with uh, teeth problems, do this. Put your hand on your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my teeth to be 100% whole. Okay? Do it just like you see me doing. Say, in the name of Jesus, 
I command my teeth to be 100% whole, okay? And the physical healing power of God, you'll see it start to come to pass in your teeth. Yes, you will. Well, Prophet Taylor, that just sounds crazy. Then you miss your healing in. Those of you that believe God, do it like I just told you, okay? Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's struggling with their left leg. Put your hand, put your left hand on your left thigh and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing into my left leg and I command it to be every whit whole with no more pain and fully functional. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command it, I release it and I authorize it. Amen. Okay, you'll feel the power of God begin to manifest in your left leg, whoever that was for. Okay. Okay, don't, don't feel any uh, leading to cast out any particular spirit. All right, uh, let me see if the Holy Ghost has another word of wisdom and knowledge for me to release. Okay, the Lord is saying, for behold, my people, I wait for you to come to me to receive my instruction. I wait for you to come to me so I can show you in small details what my will is for your life. And as you begin to follow my voice, into precision obedience and into small details. I will instruct you and guide you and teach you in the way that you should go. And I will give you victory in detail in every area of your life, says the Lord Jesus Christ by the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That always encourages me. So remember, I always tell you, I'm not telling you anything that I'm not doing because I'm doing this too. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I want you to get on my email list on my Facebook page. There is a button that says sign up. I want you to get on my email list because I'm going to be dropping some new material this year. And everybody on the alert list is not a spam. I don't spam people because I hate spam. So I don't give spam. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's an alert to let you know when something new is dropping. Not just my broadcast, but I mean, I'm going to have some books and some other prophetic materials that's coming out this year. So, on my Facebook page, dt 2 Prophet David Taylor, click on the sign up button and get on my alert list so you'll know when that stuff is dropping. Uh, also, uh, this Thursday, I'm doing my No More Genies. This Thursday, I'm doing part one of teaching on marriage. So I've been talking about that for a long time, and the Lord just gave me the, re the release to start doing some teaching on marriage. So that's going to happen this Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You don't want to miss it. Okay, because there's, a, there's so many myths and there's so many fairy tales and there's so many wrong ideas out there about marriage. But we don't we don't seem to hear the word of God. We don't listen to the one that invented marriage before we get married. So we're going to do we're going to cut through so many of those wrong ideas and hear what the Bible is actually saying, what the Lord is actually saying. So that's this Thursday. So don't miss that. OK. All right. So I uh, just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And um, uh, you can watch the replay if you didn't catch me live, Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Uh, I appreciate you so much. And uh, so I will be back on my regular time uh, next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be here this Thursday, uh, excuse me, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time for No More Genies, talking about part one of my series on marriage. And then get on my alert list so that when I start releasing some new prophetic materials later on, you'll be the first to know when those are going to drop and when they'll be available. All right? Thank you so much. God bless you. I will see you this Thursday and next Sunday. And remember, this week, practice.